Lesson 2, Newton's First Law Identifying Forces Ospreys are birds of prey that live near bodies of water. Perhaps several minutes ago, the mother osprey in figure 10 was in the air in a high-speed dive. It might have plunged it towards a nearby lake after seeing a fish in the water. As it neared the water, it moved its leg forward to grab the fish. When its talons in the in and it then stretched out of it out its wings and used them to climb high into the air. Before the osprey comes to rest on its nest, it will slow its speed and land softly on the next nest's edge, near the young birds waiting for food. Forces help the mother osprey change the speed and direction of its motion. Recall that a force is a push or pull. Some of the forces were contact forces, such as air resistance, which, um, when soaring, the osprey spread its wing, increasing air res resistance in a dive. It held its wing close to its body, changing its shape, decreasing its surface area and air resistance. Gravity also pulled the osprey towards the ground. The to understand the motion of an object, you need to identify the forces acting on it. In the lesson, you will read how forces change the motion of objects. Combining forces and F forces. Suppose you will try to move a piece of heavy furniture, such as the dresser in figure 11. If you push on the dresser by yourself, you have to push hard on the dresser to overcome the static friction and move it. If you ask a friend to push with you, you do not have to push as hard. When two or more forces act on the object, the forces combine. The combination of all the forces acting on an object is an F-force. The way in which forces combine depends on the direction of the forces applied to an object. Combining forces in the same direction. When the forces applied to the object um, act in the same direction, the net force... um. The way in which forces combine depends on the directions of... The forces applied to an object. Combining forces in the same direction. When the forces applied in to, to an object act in the same direction, the net force is the sum of the individual forces. In this case, the direction of the net force is the same as the direction of individual forces. Because forces have direction, you you have to specify a reference direction. You have when you combine forces in figure 7, uh, figure 11, for example, you would probably choose to the right, that's the positive reference, um, direction, both forces that then would be positive. Um, the net force on the dresser is the sum of two forces pushing together in the direction, in the same direction. One person pushes the dresser with a force of 200 newtons, um, to the right. The other person pushes with a force of 100 newtons to the Right. The net force on the dresser is 200 newtons plus 100 newtons um, plus 300 newtons. Uh, equals 300 newtons um, to the right. The force applied to the dresser is the same as if one person pushed on the desk with a force of 300 and, uh, and newtons to the right. Combining forces in opposite directions. When forces act on in opposite directions of an object, the net force is still the sum of the object forces. Suppose you choose to the right again as the reference direction in figure 12. A force is that direction is positive and a force in the opposite direction is negative. The net force is the sum of the positive and negative forces. The next force is 100 newtons to the right. Balanced and unbalanced forces. When equal forces act on an object in opposite directions, as in figure 13, the net force on the object is zero. The effect is the same as if there were no forces acting on an object. Forces acting on an object that combine and form a net force of zero are balanced forces. Balanced forces do not change the motion of an object. However, the net force on the, on the dresser in figure 12 is not zero. The, there is a net force to the right. Forces acting on an object that combine and form the net force that is not zero are unbalanced Chapter forces. Two. Unit lesson 3. Newton's second law. How do forces change motion? Think about different ways that forces can change an object's motion. For example, how do forces change the motion of someone riding a bicycle? The forces of the person's feet on the pedals can cause the wheels of the bicycle to turn faster and the bicycle speed to increase the speed of a skater slowly slide s 
sliding uh, across the ice gradually decreases because of friction um, between the skates and the ice. Suppose you're pushing a wheelbarrow across a yard. You can change its speed by pushing with more or less force. You can change its direction by pushing it in the direction you want to move. Forces change an object's motion by changing its speed, its direction, or both its speed and its direction. Unbalanced forces and velocity. Velocity is speed in a certain direction. Only unbalanced forces change an object's velocity. A bicycle's speed you will not increase unless the forces of the person's feet on the pedals is greater than friction that slows the wheels. A skater's speed will not decrease if the skater pushes back against the ice with a force greater than the friction against the skates. If someone pushes the wheelbarrow with the same force in, but in the opposite direction w that you are ch pushing, the wheelbarrow's direction will not change. In the previous lesson, you will read about for Newton's first law of motion. Balanced forces do not change an object's velocity. In this lesson, you will read about how unbalanced forces affect the velocity of an object. Unbalanced forces on an object at rest. An example of how unbalanced forces affect an object at rest is shown in figure 16. At first, the ball is not moving. The hand holds the ball up against the downward pull of gravity. Because the forces on the ball are balanced, the ball remains at rest. When the hand moves out of the way, <coughs> the ball falls downward. You know that the forces on the ball are now unbalanced because the ball's motion changed. The ball moves in the direction of the net force. When unbalanced forces act on an object at rest, the object begins to be begins to moving begin begins moving in the direction of the net force. Unbalanced forces of an object in motion. Unbalanced forces change the velocity of a moving object. Recall that one way to change that object's velocity is to change its speed. Speeding up if the net force acting on a moving object is in the direction that the object is moving. The object will speed up, for example, a net force acts on the sled in figure 17. Because the net force is in the direction of the motion, the sled speed increases. Slowing down, think about what happens if the direction of the net force of an object on an object is opposite to the direction the object moves. The object slows down when the boy sliding on the sled in figure 17 pushes his foot against his, the snow. Friction acts in the up direction opposite to his motion. Because the net force is in the, is the is in the direction opposite to the sled's motion, the sled speed decreases. Changes in direction of motion. Another way that unbalanced forces can change an object's velocity is to change its direction. The ball in figure 18 moved at the constant velocity until it hit the rail of the billiard table. The force applied to the, by the rail changed the ball's direction. Likewise, unbalanced forces change the direction of Earth's crust. Recall that the crust is broken into moving pieces called plates. The direction of one plate called changing changes while when another plate pushes against it with an unbalanced force. Unbalanced forces and acceleration. You have read how unbalanced forces can change an object's velocity by changing its speed in di its direction, or both its speed and its direction. Another name for a change in velocity over time is acceleration. When the girl in figure 17 pushes the, push the sled, the sled accelerated because its speed changed. When the billiard table, a bi when the billiard ball in figure 18 hit the side of the table, the ball accelerated because its direction changed. Unbalanced forces can make an object accelerate by changing its speed, its direction, or both. Newton's second law of motion. Isaac Newton also described the relationship between an object's acceleration, change in velocity over time, and the net force that acts on an object. According to Newton's second law of motion, the acceleration of an object is equal to the net force acting on an object dividing by, divided by the object's mass. The direction of acceleration is the same as the direction of the net force. Newton's second law equation. Acceleration in meters per second squared equals net force in newtons out of mass in kilograms. A equals F out of M. Notice that the equation for Newton's second law has SI units. Acceleration is expressed in meters per second squared. M, M out of second squared. Um, mass out of second squared. Mass in kilograms, kilograms. And force in Newton's, Newton's. Force this equation. It follows that a Newton is the same as kilograms times meter per second squared. 
Circular motion. Newton's second law of motion describes the relationship between an object's change in velocity over time, or acceleration and unbalanced forces acting on the object. You already read how this relationship applies to motion along a line. It also applies to circular motion. Circular motion is any type, any motion in which an object is moving along a curved path. Centripetal force. This ball in figure, 30, figure 19 is in circular motion. The velocity arrows show that the ball has the tendency to move along a straight path. Inertia, not a force, causes this motion. The ball's path is curved because the string pulls the ball inward. In circular motion, a force that acts perpendicular to the direction of motion towards the center of the curve is centripetal force. The figure also shows that the ball accelerates in the direction of the centripetal force. The motion of satellites and planets. Another object that exper experiences with centripetal forces is a satellite. A satellite is any object in space that orbits a larger object like the ball in figure 19. A satellite tends to move along a straight path because of inertia. But just as the string pulls the gra ball inward, gravity pulls the satellite inward. Gravity is the centripetal force that keeps the satellite in orbit by changing its direction. The moon is a satellite at Earth. As shown in figure 19, Earth's gravity changes the motion's direction. Similarity, similarly, the sun's gravity changes to the direction of its satellites, including Earth.